let's add a custom entity to Minecraft. All right, we find ourselves back in IntelliJ once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding a custom entity or custom mob to Minecraft. Now, this is going to be a very, very interesting thing indeed. And for this mob, what we're actually going to need is another, well, API. And we're going to use the GeckoLib API for this. So in the description below, I have linked the GeckoLib repository here for from GitHub, basically. And this wiki will explain everything on how to install it. But of course, we're going to go through this as well. So we need the for forage use right here and making sure that we go down all the way to 118. There you go. And then we need to, first of all, copy this one right here for the repositories. So let's go in back to IntelliJ and let's go into our build.gradle file. And we have to add this specifically a little bit further down. So we need to go to the repositories right here and then just add it right here. So we can see pretty similar to, you know, the JI one where we just add this Maven right here, this Maven URL. And then we also want to add this one right here, the dependency. And let's make sure that this is also copied over. So this was going to be down here. There you go. And that should be all that we need in this case. We can then just hit the load gradle changes button and let it build run through. You know, once again, might take a minute to maybe even just a few seconds depends on a lot of different factors, your PC, your internet connection, and whether or not you've done this maybe even before. But uh, let's just let this run through in the background. One way or another, I highly recommend checking out the wiki because there is actually a lot of stuff in here that you can, well, basically get from, well, taking a look at the wiki. I highly recommend it. And then the, yeah, that's pretty much the general idea. There are also some example, uh, basically example build.gradle files, but you know, we basically have seen this already. This is now run through 31 seconds and there you go. So just add those two and then immediately afterwards in our tutorial mod class at the very bottom, what we're just going to do is we're just going to say gecko lib dot initialize. And then we also know, of course, that it works because the gecko lib class has been successfully added, you know, to our project. Therefore, gecko lib is correctly installed. Now, GeckoLib is installed. How are we going to add our custom entity? Well, first of all, what we're going to do is once again use Blockbench to actually create our custom entity. And this, the reason why we're using GeckoLib is because then we can add amazing and very cool animations to it. So let's open Blockbench here. As you can see, I've already prepared the raccoon entity right here. So this is really well done. I mean, it's really awesome. So the idea here is that when you have Blockbench, you can actually download a plugin. So this is going to be under File Plugins, and that is the GeckoLib Animation Utils right here. So just go to Available and search for that, and then install this. And then if you have this, then you can make the new entity. So we can then go down here, GeckoLib Animated Model, and then, you know, whatever, test, let's say. And then you can change this up. You can also go, I believe, to the, where is it? It is in right here, get all the model settings, and then make sure that this is set to entity. And then you can, well, change this however you would like. And in this case, right, we already have our raccoon done. And then you see this animate button right here. So we can click on this, and then there are different animations. I'm going to quickly sort of roughly explain what this does. If you've ever edited a video, or if you've ever, you know, made something with animations, then you will know this timeline, it basically works with keyframes. So if we go to the walk animation right here, you can see that if I, for example, click on the leg, you can see there are certain, well, different things that happen. Um, let's actually see if there is the legs should have animations to associate it with it. Maybe it's actually it's, it's the individual parts that actually have the animations. So you can see those are the different keyframes here so you can see the rotation and then the rotation right here is going to be something different and then in between it just well it changes the actual rotation in between so that's the idea of keyframes and um, you know i highly recommend just playing around with this a little bit and checking it out if there's a lot of demand for it then i can also make a little bit more of an in-depth tutorial for blockbench uh, just you know just Give me a comment down below and then we'll see that to that as well. But yeah, the general idea is that you can basically change stuff with the animations here. You can, I also have a sitting animation, which is just, you know, literally this. And then the walking animation, you saw it, but if I play it, there you go. There it's walking and really freaking awesome. There also is an idle animation. I can show you this as well. So it's like very, very basically, like it's almost not visible to see. It's just like the body and the head moving up and down. And then of course the tail just rotating around. And the way I've done this is, if I click on this and see, I've actually done this with a rotation and this is just some mathematics once again. So the sine curve, of course, is just a curve that goes like this, right? And then we're basically just putting in the actual animation time and then, you know, actually just 
multiplying it with some factor here and then outside as well. So you can also change those factors to, I mean, change the speed and or, you know, the actual where it stops and where it starts, basically. So the amplitude and all of that, you can basically change with just these two factors right here. So once again, highly recommend playing around with this. This block bench file will be, of course, available to you as well. Let's just save this for the sake of argument. And then we, what we can we do with this? Well, first of all, we have to go to a file here and then export the Gecko Lib model. So there you go. I've already done this. This is a geo.json file, so very important, a bedrock model. Don't worry about it. This will work in Java as well. Let's just replace this. That's fine. So if we go to the animate tab and then to animations, we can export the animations as well. Make sure to select all of them, confirm, and then we can basically see this is an animations.json file. So just save, save this as well. And there you go. And then we have all of the JSON files that we basically need as well. And then we can proceed in IntelliJ. Right, so what are we going to need here? Well, first of all, we are going to need a new package. So in our tutorial mod package, right click new package called entity. And then inside of there, we're going to make a new a new package called custom. And then inside of there, we're going to make one class. So in the entity package mod entity types, there you go. And then in the custom package, we're going to create the raccoon entity class. There you go. And this is going to be very, very interesting. Let's start with the raccoon entity class, and this is going to be, well, quite interesting uh, indeed. So this is going to extend the animal class, this one right here, and this is going to implement the iAnimatable. There you go. Let's hover over this and implement methods. It's going to be three methods right here. And then we'll also hover over this and construct, uh, create constructor matching super, and this should be fine. If the actual names here bother you, you can click on it. Shift F6 to change the names, and then the actual suggestion should be fine. So the next thing we're going to need, I'm going to copy over a few things. Once again, of course, everything here is available to you in the description below. Get a repository in individual gist as well. The first thing we're going to need is the animation factory. This is the thing that we're going to return right here. So we're just going to say this dot factory. So that should be the first thing that we need. This is, of course, needed for the animations. The get breed offspring is something we're going to actually ignore for the time being. This is going to be done in a future tutorial where I'm actually going to show you how to add the you know baby entities as well. It's not that complicated, but I wanted to do it in a custom tutorial as well so that we have this as well. Uh, let's make this constructor public as well. Otherwise, we're going to forget this. And then we're going to need a, another thing, and that is going to be the attributes. So the attributes are incredibly important here. So I'm going to copy this over as well. This is a set attributes method. And the reason why we need this is, of course, well, this particular entity needs some attributes. And if we forget to set the attributes, then it's actually not going to work. So uh, please keep that in mind. We're going to see how to set them in just a moment. If this is great to you, then usually you have not called it. Therefore, the attributes have not been set. So keep that in mind as well. Then what we are also going to need is we're going to need the things for the animation. So some things here are, of course, you know, vanilla, and some things are specific to GeckoLib. Specific to GeckoLib are these two methods. And for this register controls method, we're going to need another method, which is called the, which is called predicate. I'm just, just going to copy this over, and it's going to look like this. There should be no errors present. And the idea is that you can see it basically goes to the animation. So it basically has a reference to the animation raccoon walk and animation raccoon idle. So if we switch back to Blockbench for a second and look at the animations, this is exactly the name of these animations here. And this is what this basically refers to. In our register controller, what we want to call is this. This is pretty much boilerplate code. This is always going to be the same. Right? Data.animation controller, just with a name controller, and then passing in this quote -unquote predicate here as the last par parameter. And this is, well, yeah, pretty much the thing that we want. So if the actual entity is moving, then we want to display the walk animation, and if nothing happens, then we just want to display the aisle animation. Right, these are almost all of the things that we need to add here. We need to we have two different things that we still can still add. The number one is the sound. So we can actually add some custom sounds here. So you can see there are five methods play step sound, ambient sound, hurt sound, death sound, and the sound of volume, which you can basically override and you can return any type of sound event here for these and then just, just basically play them when certain things happen. So I highly recommend playing around with this as well. Like always be open to experimentation and just play around with this and then you'll hopefully find a few cool sounds to play here. But the last method that we want to add is the register goals method. And I'm just going to copy this over and you can see. So this is probably, well, the most complicated, the most complicated one, simply because of the fact that the goals can be quite complex. 
So the general idea of the goals is the following, that you have certain goals with a certain priority, and then those goals are basically executed. Now we can go into those, you know, goal classes by pressing middle mouse button on those classes, and then you can see well, how, basically how they work. Now what I can do, for example, is I can go into any goal, and you can see it extends from the goal class. If I click on this and press Control H, we are able to see all of the different goals that are, exist in Minecraft. If I, you know, expand all of them, we can see even more goals that exist. So uh, we're not going to do any custom goals in this tutorial series because that would be way too complicated. And also it would be probably too specific because, you know, the one person maybe wants a specific goal that is something completely different from another person. And here it just is once again what I always say, if you don't have sufficient Java knowledge, custom goals are going to be very, very hard to understand because it just requires a lot of Java knowledge here. I would say intermediate at least. Otherwise, you are, might be stuck. I mean... Once again, uh, be open to experimentation, try out a bunch of stuff, look at the vanilla goals here and try to understand what they're doing. And then probably, hopefully, you can sort of map it if you have custom goals that you want. Otherwise, you can also take a look at some of the actual other classes. So if I middle mouse button click on the animal, middle mouse button click on the ageable mob, middle mouse button click here, and then on the mob, I can, you know, once again, and then once again on the living entity, and then the entity is pretty much the last one. Yeah, the entity is the last one. So what I can do is when I'm on the entity, click on it, press control H once again, and then see all of the different entities that are available to us. Let's actually expand this as well. And then you can see all of the different entities. And once again, highly suggest go through the, you know, the actual vanilla code. Look at how things done. If you're like, I, I want to add something that's similar to a guest. Look at the guest. The guest has everything you need to know. And yeah, it looks like quite a lot. But when you really think about it, you know, you usually don't need everything. And even if you need a lot of it, you know, just go piece by piece. Think about it. Okay, what does this mean? What does this mean? What does this mean? So I highly recommend, I cannot recommend this enough because entities, you know, custom entities, custom mobs can be very, very complicated depending on what exactly you want to do. And, you know, looking at the vanilla things is just the best resource that you have, basically. Right, but that would be the entity. And now what we want to do is we want to register this entity. So this is going to be in our mod entity types class right here. And I will actually copy over the deferred register and the method because let's be honest, you've seen me, you know, type out the deferred register about a billion times already. So I think that these two things should be fairly self-explanatory at this point, right? Just this. And then we, of course, also call this right here. Let's just call it um, actually right here. So this is going to be the mod entity types dot register and then passing in the event bus. There you go. And then I will also copy over the registry object right here, but this should be, you know, no worries at all. So you can see we're calling the entity types for register, register, of course, and then the name raccoon, fair enough. And then we're making a supplier of entity type builder of the raccoon entity colon colon new. So this calls the actual constructor right here. Make sure that, you know, everything here is set up correctly, that this is made public as well. And then we have to specify a category. This is a creature. There's also, as you can see, ambient X models, misc, monster, and some other ones, but creature here fits perfectly. The size here is actually the size of your hitbox as well. So keep that in mind for the size. And then here, the build in this case just needs a resource location, once again, with the name of the actual entity and then to string. So this is all that you really need for this, and that would be fine. But after having added this, we now need some sort of way of actually, well, displaying the raccoon entity. So in our entity package, we're going to make a new package called client. And inside of there, we're going to need two new classes. One of them is going to be the raccoon model. And the other one is going to be the raccoon renderer. So once again, this is specific for... Gecko-lib, if you have, if you don't have Gecko-lib, then this is not going to work. You can't follow this tutorial any, like anymore. Um, I mean, you couldn't follow it anyway with the I animatable, of course, right? You need Gecko-lib for this, but still, um, the model and the renderer are specific to Gecko-lib now. So we're going to start with the model, which is going to extend the animated geo model, and then in the angle brackets raccoon entity. There you go. And then we're going to hover over this implement methods, and this is going to be three methods. Now this is actually going to be fairly straightforward. We're just going to need a new resource location, of course, every time of tutorial mod dot mod ID, and then another path here. The first one is going to be geo slash raccoon dot geo dot JSON. And of course, how about we write this correctly? There you go, raccoon geo JSON. There you go. And then let's just copy this over because the other ones are going to be very similar. This is going to be a textures slash entity slash raccoon 
slash raccoon dot png action. There you go. And then the last one is just animations. And then instead of geojson, we have animation.json. There you go. So this is all that the raccoon model here really needs. So here we're pointing to the actual model file. Here we're pointing to the texture. And here we're pointing to the animation file. Pretty should be fairly self-explanatory. These two we have exported from GeckoLib. And then this one, well, I mean, it was also in GeckoLib, but we also have this available. So we're going to add those in just a moment. First, we're going to go into the renderer, which is also not that crazy. So this is going to extend the geo entity renderer once again of type raccoon entity here. And let's hover over this create constructor matching super. And the first thing we want to do is this model right here, we want to get rid of. And then here, instead of the model provider, we want to say new raccoon model. There you go. And then here we can also define the shadow radius. So for example, shadow radius is going to be, I don't know, 0.3, for example. And there you go. So this should be done as well. And here we want to override two methods. I'm just going to copy them over. It's not going to be too complicated. You can see once again, the get texture location method and the get render type method. Here we can also scale the size of our entity. So if you, for example, want your entity to be bigger, you can then here do it, right? 111 would be just 100%. And then if you had, you know, 1.5 in every direction, then you would scale it by 50% up. So think about that and you can also do that as well. But right, these are pretty much the things that we need to do here. So let's then go and actually register the entity renderer as well. So this rendering class, instead of the tutorial mode package, inside of the client setup event, what we want to do is we want to say, what we want to say is en entity renderers, there you go, dot register, and then pass in mod entity types, dot raccoon, dot get, and then the raccoon renderer, which I actually mistyped, colon, colon, new, you can see, let's actually rename this written properly there you go and then we should be fine there should be no errors present right here as long as you change the constructor of the raccoon renderer and then we should be fine we can close those two classes this one as well and then we only need the attributes method and then the json files so the attributes method very very important as i've said this has to be set otherwise it's not going to work and this is going to be done in our events package mod event bus events and here we're just going to need a new method i'm going to copy this over quickly once again this is not too crazy you know this is just the set the entity attributes event and you can see this is the entity attribute creation event here and we're just adding the raccoon with the raccoon set attribute that's literally all we're doing nothing too crazy here so yeah that's pretty much how we what we have to do very important and then you can see also this turns yellow so now we know that this has been set and everything here is fine and now we need the JSON files. Now, luckily, where we need to put the JSON files is pretty much defined in this model right here. So you can see geo raccoon geo JSON. So this goes into our assets folder, tutorial mod folder. And here we need to make a new directory called geo. And then I'm going to copy over the actual geo JSON. There you go. That's the raccoon geo JSON. Yes, please. And then we also need the animations folder. So animations. And then copy over the animations raccoon animations JSON. There you go. And that should be fine as well. And then last but not least, we also need under the textures folder, a new directory called entity. And then here, a new directory called raccoon. And that is one oh too many. That's going to be fine. Let's just do this. And then there you go. And then let's add the raccoon ng as well. And those should be all of the different, well, things that we need to hear. Now, what we still need, and this is pretty crazy, we still, of course, want a custom item. Now, what custom item would we want? Well, we want a spawn egg. Yes, that is exactly right. So we could, in theory, already spawn our custom entity with a with the summon command. But let's be honest, a custom spawn egg would be cool as well. So let's just add the spawn egg right here. So let's just copy this over quickly. That's going to be fine. Like always, of course, everything available to you in the description below, GitHub repository, and individual gist as well. You can see we're using a forge spawn egg item in this case. I mean, here we can actually make it an item. I mean, it doesn't need to be this. But here you can see this is a forge spawn egg item and raccoon spawn egg with the colors. So those are going to be the colors of the actual egg. Now, what we still need for this is a translation file. So in the translation, actually. And we also need a item model file for this as well. So let's just add this. There you go, raccoon spawn egg. It should be fairly self-explanatory and the actual item model is not going to be too crazy as well this is just going to be the actual spawn egg there you go so we can see this is also very straightforward it just has the item template templates spawn egg as a parent because of course then it's going to basically color it in with the two colors that's the general idea here 
And those are all of the steps that you have to do here in order to add our own custom entity. Uh, you know, once again, there are quite a few steps overall and, you know, the actual class itself, while not particularly crazy in terms of how much there is, you know, it can be quite complicated to get exactly what you want. I once again highly suggest you just have to be open to experimentation, try a load of stuff, look at the vanilla code that is the best resource that you have at hand. The second best resource is probably other mods uh, on GitHub, basically, that also use GeckoLib, and you can always take a look at those as well. But for the time being, let's see if it works. All right, found ourselves back in Minecraft and the spawn egg has been added. So let's see if we can spawn the raccoon. And there you go. Let's just spawn a bunch of them. And you can see the idle animation and then the walking animation as soon as they begin to walk. So let's see if we can see it a little bit more. There you go. So we can we saw the walk animation there. And they, well, they also have the custom sounds. So you can hear that. And well, they also flee. So that is another goal that is basically uh, determined in the goals register goals method and yeah that's pretty much how easy it is to add a custom entity to minecraft right and while this is it for this tutorial right here we're going to continue with the entity tutorials for another week and a half right about so we're going to basically make it tameable as well add the baby entities we're also going to take a look at how you can spawn them and then also have different variants so basically have them have different colors so that's all still to come but that would be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would very much appreciate a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. I also want to thank all of my lovely Patreon supporters for supporting me and this channel. It is very much appreciated. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. So, yeah.